God, we're thankful for, again, this opportunity you've afforded us to uh, talk about this mission uh, that we call Christianity as we look to walk in the footsteps of Jesus the Christ, our Lord and Savior. We pray, God, for the increase that only you can give as we walk through here. Uh, our mission is to become better at, at faith, uh, that is, witnessing our faith and helping others by the power of the Holy Spirit uh, to come to faith. Uh, sometimes, God, it's, you know, it can be daunting talking about our faith, you know, so to become more comfortable having more confidence um, because of you working in us, Father, that's our goal here. So we ask you, Father, just to give the increase again that only you can. And we so appreciate your faithfulness, Father. And this we ask in Jesus, our Savior's name. Amen. Okay. Uh, good work on your assignments. Um, um, I've had assignments like that before myself where uh, the scenario asks for a list and then um, it challenges us to put these things into practice. So that was designed to do that. Um, you know, and how you do it, when you do it, you know, that's something for each of you to work out uh, with God. Um, one of the things or the thing I want to talk about today is actually Peel, uh, Peel and Laramore, uh, page uh, 193, um, when uh, the authors talk about prayer. Because uh, when we start talking about witnessing, when we start talking about helping people on their journey, you know, this is a postmodern world that we live in. Uh, I think we've dealt with uh, postmodernity a little bit. Uh, if not, that's a small group ministry. But um, this is a world that doesn't honor God the way we do. And it doesn't honor God the way, like when Granny was growing up, the world is totally different than the way it was when Granny was growing up. Uh, even people who didn't have faith or believed in God still treated you a certain way when granny was growing up. Um, you've probably heard tragically Thursday morning, I want to say a police officer, Arlington police officer was run over. Um, uh, he was on his bicycle or his motorcycle headed to work and he actually ran into the back of a vehicle that was on him. But when he hit the vehicle, he fell on I-20 and then somebody ran over the police officer, kept going. The police officer is no longer with us, and the person didn't even hang around to pray or call 911. They just kept going. That wouldn't have happened when Granny was a kid. It just wouldn't have. The world has changed for the worse, I might add. Um, so when you start talking about being witnesses of Jesus the Christ in this world, I mean, we don't know what to expect. I mean, is a person going to curse us out? You know, are they going to chew our head off? Are we going to lose friends? Yeah, some of that's going to happen. Okay. Uh, Jesus bore witness to who he was. How'd they work out for him? They nailed him to a tree. Uh, the apostles, our understanding is out of the 12 apostles that Jesus chosen, uh, Judas killed himself. Out of the 11 that remained, 10 of them were martyred. The only one that did not suffer martyrdom was John. And he was excommunicated to the island of Patmos which is where he penned what we call the revelation. So ever since the beginning, walking in the footstep of Jesus has been one. Um, it, it's difficult. There, there's an opportunity for rejection. There's an opportunity to be harmed even. Um, can you imagine a group of believers getting on an airplane, being parachuted into Saudi Arabia and being told to witness when we hit the ground, we wouldn't make it to the end of the week. We would be slaughtered. That's the world that we live in. We're blessed to be in America, you know, because we have the freedom to witness uh, the faith in Christ. But there are people who also have the freedom to be atheist and agnostic or whatever they want to be. So with that freedom, there's a downside, right? So with all those things being the case, I think it's good that we really understand the power of prayer and how prayer should be coupled with evangelism. Uh, so like, you know, 193, let's look at this. Um, the paragraph that says, pray for yourself. Well, I'm going to start with prayer in the workplace. A few years ago, Ben Sona asked me, this is Bill, 
If it was all right to pray for his business, I was startled that this man, someone who was very sincere about his faith, had no idea how much God cared about his business. If we are going to experience God's power in our work, prayer at and for the workplace must be for the workplace, excuse me, must be habitual, especially if we want to see coworkers take incremental steps of faith toward a relationship with Jesus. So they offer these examples right from scripture that I think is worth us looking at tonight. Uh, the first portion, pray for yourself. Given that we are unable to accomplish anything of spiritual significance without Jesus working through us, uh, John deals with this in uh, chapter 15 of his gospel. Well, there's Jesus talking there. Prayer for ourselves is critical. In prayer for ourselves, we should ask, uh, number one, we do excellent work that attracts others' attention. Uh, this is wisdom literature of the Hebrew Bible. Uh, praying that uh, people can see the God in us um, as we are working with our hands or just being about the business of doing what we do. I was blessed one day to, uh, my coworker came up to me. He said, are you a pastor or a deacon or something? I don't know why he asked me that. I guess I, I really don't. I didn't ask why he asked me that, but I guess he saw the God in me. And he said, uh, man, I'm struggling with lust. Can you pray over me? The humility, he made himself so vulnerable. Uh, and, you know, I pray at UPS. I don't really care if they like it. Uh, I'm not trying to be arrogant, but that's just where I am with it. If you could say the F word, I could say the J word. That's how it is. Uh, so I prayed over him, you know, and I've had the opportunity as we're riding around, as people moving through the building, I, I'll, I'll take people to the throne of God. I'm comfortable doing that, right? Uh, if anyone's still working at that, that's okay. I'm not saying, hey, be demand. No, I'm saying we carry ourselves in a way where we can raise that flag and someone can say, hey, will you pray for me? You know, and, and the Holy Spirit has a way of leading people to us. Brother Stevie a lot talks about his time at Costco. I mean, the reputation that God has blessed him to have. Hey, you're the dude that prays at Costco all on Facebook. I'm like, oh my gosh, how powerful is that? And he's humble enough to give God the glory. Uh, yes, powerful there. Uh, Matthew 5, 16, our work should bring glory to God. Of course, this is Jesus talking to the disciples there on the side of the mountain. Uh, Paul, we would treat people fairly. He says, pray that when he's talking to the Colossian believers. Uh, pray that we would have a good reputation with unbelievers. Paul talking to the Thessalonians. Uh, Others would see Jesus in us. Uh, this is the Apostle Paul talking to the Philippians. Pray that our lives would make our faith attractive. Uh, Paul talking to Titus there. Pray our con conversations would be wise, sensitive, grace-filled, and enticing. Uh, Paul to the Colossians. Uh, pray we will be bold and fearless. That's a wonderful prayer. You know, again, if we are wanting to witness, if we're wanting to raise our faith flag, our faith flag, but you know, we're, we're just not there yet. Pray about that situation. Uh, you've heard me testify. I know the Christian experience has, experience has. When I first started preaching, I, oh my gosh, I cannot tell you how anxious I was, how nervous I was. When I was a kid on Youth Sunday and they would have the young men work around the table, oh my gosh, you know, I was just a nervous kid. Uh, but when I felt the calling, I just had to deal with the anxiety. I had to stay in that pulpit. Every time my pastor said, Coleman, you preaching, I started on Sunday night. Okay. And I don't know if y'all remember when you were a kid, when your mom or dad let you know in advance that there was a, a thrashing coming your way. I don't know if Nikki don't say nothing because granny's right there and I'm not trying to get nobody in trouble. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you've ever been there, but that's the way it happened in my house. That there was a a warning in the future, the near future, your behind and the belt are going to have Cornelia Fellowship, okay? And it's like, there's this anticipation, like, why don't you just beat me now? I got to sit and think about this for eight hours, you cruel heathen. I didn't say that. I just thought it. My premise is, that's how it was when I first started preaching. The anxiety was like, wow, I know next Sunday, and I'm thinking about it all week because it's you know, the nervousness just kept doing it. 
now talking in front of people about the Lord is it's okay. But I had to fight the fear. Uh, so becoming bold and fearless prayer helps that. Uh, we would be alert to open doors. Uh, we've been studying Colossians at the experience. We had talked about this stuff recently. Uh, pray we'll be able to clearly explain the gospel. Uh, pray God would expand our influence. Uh, this is going back to the uh, Hebrew Bible. Uh, so those are all prayers that relate to, you know, praying for ourselves and asking others to pray for us. Uh, then the authors deal with some prayers for others. Uh, the Apostle John, he says, or they say, uh, note that if we ask anything according to God's will, God hears us. Uh, Walt's mentor encouraged him, he says, to pray the following petitions for Dave and Ann. Based on these Bible passages, we recommend you pray seriously for your uh, pre-Christian friends. Uh, these are the people that you might want to witness to. Uh, maybe the people that were on your lists uh, that you turned into me. Maybe people that will be on a list one day. Uh, pray the Father would draw them to himself. Remember, we're here doing the will of God. This is not the will of pastors, not the will of members, not the will of this woman, this man, this believer, this Christian. No, we're trying to point people to Jesus the Christ. We are doing his bidding to his glory, you know, so that gives us confidence. You know, I don't need you to believe me. You know, I need you to believe in him. You know, he's the authority, God. Uh, pray they would seek to know God, uh, Deuteronomy and also Acts. Pray they would believe the Bible. Uh, there's text for that. Uh, pray Satan will be restrained from blinding them to the truth. Uh, pray the Holy Spirit will convict them of sin, righteousness, and judgment. Those are good. You know, as we go about witnessing and helping them uh, to understand why they need the Lord, you know, we have to grapple with our sins. You know, all of sin comes short of the glory of God. We understand that as Christians, but we might talk to some folk who think they're above reproach, that they're impeccable, Okay. Pray that God would send other Christians to their lives to influence them toward Jesus. Uh, that's good. Um, sometimes as we go about doing uh, evangelism work, we might be tempted to believe that it is our responsibility to get them to change their mind. No, it's not. God gives the increase we don't. Uh, even when we look at Israel and their journey be uh, between Egypt and Canaan, there were two people involved in that process, at least two, Moses and Joshua. Moses did his part. Joshua did his part. Okay. So I remember being young in faith and really wanting to help people be saved and stuff like that. I wanted to get it, do it till it was done, do it till it was done. I wanted to see it, you know, it's not for me to see, you know, it's for me to do my part. It's, it's for me to raise my faith flag. It's, it's for me to allow people to see the Jesus in me, but I never know how God is going to use that. It might be a situation where I represent God here, another believer in another state represents Christ there. And the memory of the person in the other state might remember, you know, there was another person that that talked about Jesus and demonstrated Jesus before. You know, this is, must be something real. This is something I need to consider. You know, so we're praying uh, in that space. Pray that they would believe in Jesus as their savior. Hey, that's what, they, what it's about. Pray that they would turn from sin. Pray they would confess Jesus as Lord. Pray they would yield their lives to follow uh, Jesus. Pray they would take root and grow in Jesus. Pray they would become a positive influence for Jesus in their realm. You know, at the end of the day, uh, we are the body of Christ and mem members in particular. Um, we are here to do his beating on the planet. Imagine a world, um, a Christian world where believers all over this world are coming together for the mission of, of teaching people about Jesus. We can, we can get there. There's a word, ecumenical. I don't know if anybody's ever heard that word, but ecumenical speaks of unity. Um, uh, grandma and granny in the church was talking about some things today about how sometimes people who identify with Christ are kind of working against each other. That's not our space. And don't get me wrong. 
There are 8 billion people on the planet, about 3 billion of them identify with Jesus somehow, some way. There's way too many cultures, way too many languages, way too many countries, way too many experiences for us to see him exactly the same way. That's just not going to happen. The spirit of being ecumenical says, even though we're different in various ways, we have a way to come together and don't allow our differences to define who we are in Christ. Many members, one body, different cultures, different backgrounds, speak different languages, but our mission is to come together to facilitate the mission of Christ. That is one of the wonderful things that we can pray for, excuse me, and should pay, pray for. Um, as we grow in our faith and really understand, hey, why am I here? Why did God wake me up today? Do we ever consider that? Why am I here? It's September 24th. Why did God bring me into this day? So I could worship today. If I live to see tomorrow, is it so I could go drive that truck again? I don't think so. I think I'm here to do his bidding. I think I'm here to build his kingdom until he tells me that I've done enough or that he brings me home. I think that goes for every believer. But we have to get to a point in life when we see, or we do well to get to a point in life when we see that. Yes, we build tents along the way, as Paul did. He worked with from his hands. Okay. We have family business to take care of. Absolutely, we do. But that's not the main thing. The main thing is to seek first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness. It's Jesus in the temple when he was 12. Mary and Joseph looking for him. Go back to Jerusalem, find him preaching the gospel, his gospel. That's our space, family. That's our space. And it's going to take prayer to get there. So use prayer as the weapon that it is. You know, not just praying for yourselves, but also praying for others that you want to witness to and getting other people involved. You know, if you know you're going to witness to Joe Bob, you know, let the, the, the faith community, hey guys, I'm going to be you know, trying to raise my faith flag to for, to Joe Bob. You know, just pray that God seasons my mouth. Pray, uh, Granny. Granny prayed that prayer today with Nancy. Um, pray that, that God seasons my mouth. Tell me what to say. You know, use me in a great way to his glory. Yeah, we have to pray prayers like that for one another as we purposefully go about building the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Because that, brothers and sisters, is why we're here. Everything else is window dressing. Everything else is window dressing. Okay? So that's all I have. Just wanted to talk about prayer tonight. I uh, want to open it up for questions or comments about that or anything else. And uh, I'll give you your assignment for the week. And uh, yeah, we can go about our evening. Any questions or comments here? Where did Trevino's go? How long have they been gone? I wasn't looking up. Have they been gone a while? No, okay. They've been gone for about three or four minutes. Okay. Here they come back again. Look at Stevie looking like nothing happened. Look at that look. Mm. We call that perpetrating the fraud, Brother Stevie. That's what we call that in the hood. All right? Yeah. Uh, question. I, have a question. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Um, we are allowed to talk about our paper, right, that we wrote and sent to you, right? Yes, you're, you're allowed to speak on anything you've done. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> okay. When when you wrote back to me, okay, are those were was I supposed to name names? Yeah, I I responded to your email, Annie, immediately. Well, I was looking at the Cowboys, so I didn't see it. I love truth, and James talking about confession and how it works well. I mean, I, mean, I was I did I I I saw the thing. I read it. I was like, okay. And I started back looking at the TV. My phone, I cut off notifications. I don't get notifications. So I just happened to look. 
Okay, so I'll look at your response. No, okay. I'll respond. I just wanted you to know that when you sent it to me, I did respond. That's all. Uh, okay. When the way that you wrote uh, your work, it sounded generic as if, hey, I'll talk to this person generically. I'll talk to that person. Uh, but when you told me there was real people, I said, I'm sorry, Amy. Uh, yes, you did fine. And then I think I stuck my tongue out at you a few times. Uh, that's what it sounds like I did. Uh, I tend to do that. So I, I do think you got the tongue. Yes, ma'am. Lord, I, I ain't going to even say nothing to you. Oh, thank you very much. But they are real people. I just didn't want to call their name. That's fine. Absolutely. There's nothing wrong with that. Yes, ma'am. I had a second list and I did call names and you were on there. <laughs> Hold up. I'm already saved, but I do. I appreciate the prayer. <laughs> Very good. Stevie was on my list too. He already saved as well. We're praying for folk who don't know the Lord, ain't he? Did you miss the point of this class? Well, you know, That's probably because I hang out with you. Oh, in some classes, in some Do classes, not. in some situations, it oh. is hard to tell whether or not a person knows the Lord. You know what? The Bible, I believe, is Paul talking to Timothy, said foolish and unlearned questions avoid. So I ain't got nothing to say to you, Amy. Love you. And you should not have anything to say to me. You should respect your elders. You see how nice Stevie was? Take a play out of his book. Paul say the ways of a fool are right in their own eyes, ain't he? I don't, I don't know what that means, but I just wanted to share with you that that's what he said. Now you know, you know. Don't be trying to throw no shade at me. You come, you come. See that I'm gonna send you my second paper with the names on there. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Very good. Any other comments about what we talked about last week? I think Granny, you. You kind of noted that you was going to say some things. Are you good right there? Or? No, I, I couldn't get my mute to go off in my room there. So I had to come in here. Oh, okay. I wanted to tell you guys, um, when I was trying to get my homework finished up yesterday, I had four names on my list. I didn't have a fifth name. And then I got that message from my friend from... Um, Aunt Sheila, to bring you up to date, I had a friend message me yesterday uh, on Facebook, and I haven't seen or talked to her in 40 years. And that's what she said. Hey, Kathy, it's been 40 years, and we need to catch up. And um, she is Russian. She was brought up in California uh, in some kind of a Russian town where pretty much everybody is Russian. They're Russian Orthodox is their religion. And we used to carpool. And she, I know she told me that they believed that nobody was going to heaven except Russian Orthodox. But at the time, I never went very far with that with her. But now, 40 years later, um, you know, anyway, it was interesting that God just brought her up right out of the blue to me. And I started thinking, oh, I need to talk to her about her beliefs. And I, I looked at her page on Facebook and there was a guy talking about how we're already halfway through the tribulation, which I don't believe that. I don't believe the tribulation started yet. I think things are getting bad and it's going that direction, but we're not there yet. So anyway, we've got some things to talk about. And it was just interesting to me all day long. The Lord just kept telling me different things, you know, how I could talk to her on Facebook. And um, I haven't used Facebook other than just to check it out once in a while, but actually post stuff. I haven't been doing that for a few years now. So, but I'm going to start. Just watch. <laughs> the Lord was telling me all that yesterday. So I just had a fun day with it. I just, you know. Um, I went ahead and did my homework and turned it in. And then the Lord just was giving me more ways and things that I could say to her. So I, I just love that. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, like I was sharing with the church, uh, 
when we were together, the orthodoxy is uh, uh, just a little history about the orthodox, orthodoxy. Orthodoxy, along with Catholicism, they they tied their their heritage, their Christian heritage, all the way back to Jerusalem. Um, very similar to Catholicism. Matter of fact, Stevie and I went to a Greek Greek Orthodox church. And uh, when you go in, you would think you were in actually a Catholic church building. Uh, they're big on iconography, things drawn on the wall, things like that. Very ornate, very beautiful. Um, in 1066, I believe, is the year that the Orthodoxy and the Catholic Catholic Church split. And they split on many things, the biggest one being the papacy. Um, uh, but they they are there's three main streams of Christianity in the world: Orthodoxy, Catholicism, and Protestantism. Oddly enough, brothers and sisters, we're the youngest. Protestantism is only about 400 years old. Uh, Catholicism is very old. Uh, Catholicism and Orthodoxy teach some things that uh, may be a little different from what Protestants believe. But hey, Protestants don't even agree on everything either. That's why earlier I was talking about ecumen <coughs> ecumenicalism, finding a way to find unity um, somewhere in our Jesus faith. Now, don't get me wrong. How do we find unity with a group of people who think I'm going to hell because I'm not like them? It's kind of hard to find unity there. Okay. Um, so, but, but most paradigms of faith are not that extreme. Okay. And I think we can find common unity, community, even though there are differences. Uh, Paul in Ephesians 4, love the text, um, when he talks about endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit and a bond of peace. This is a Jewish man who was a Pharisee, who was called by the Christ to bring the Gentiles into relationship with the Jews. That went against everything that man was taught from a lad up. Everything that he was taught, it went against he had to learn a new way of seeing God, and he did. He saw God through the crucifixion of Jesus. And from that point of view, he was able to see Jew and Gentile coming together under the common faith in Christ, and that's what he preached. We have been challenged in 2023, 2023 to do the same. How do I find a common ground with a person who, eh, okay, so yes, Granny, you have been given one heck of a task uh, because undoubtedly, preferably she's a lovely person who believes in God, but the Nancys of the world are not gonna do God's bidding if they're telling other people who do have faith in Jesus <laughs> that they're not saved. That doesn't do Christianity any good. And I'm not trying to be critical of her because that's not my spirit. Uh, as I said many times, I have family members, blood, that would tell you the same thing. And hey, I get it. So we'll definitely be praying uh, for you, Granny, uh, for God to give you the wisdom, the discernment, uh, praying for Nancy. Some of the things that we talked about here uh, today about prayer, that God softens the heart. And let me tell you something. Uh, it, it takes faith to come to a conclusion that maybe mama was wrong, okay? Hello. It takes faith to come to the conclusion, you know what, maybe daddy was wrong. I've been there, you know? That's why the experience don't see my parents. I love them, they love me, but our worship practices are very different, okay? They don't accept what I do. I can't do anything about that. We still get together, I love them, you know? but it is what it is, okay? Uh, Jesus, when he's walking amongst us, he <laughs> tells his disciples, I didn't come to bring peace, but a sword. It's like some of the very folk you live with ain't gonna like you because you're following me. So as we're trying to follow him, we, that's more to the non-believer, I would say, but even in this context, we have to find a way um, for the sake of everything holy, for the sake of fighting the common enemy, which is the devil, to find unity amongst ourselves because of a common faith. That's, I promise you, that is the meat of my ministry. If you ever want to know what makes Dee Dee tick as a preacher, I just told you. 
You know, we have to find a way to facilitate the mission of our, of our Savior in the midst of everything we're going through in this world, the enemy and what he's working against us, and even sometimes finding common unity with people who are different, same faith in Christ, but just do things a little differently. No, we're not going to let our differences keep us apart. Eight billion people on the planet, three billion of Christians. Come on, guys. There's no way we're going to see the same thing. Not perfectly. It's too much. It's too different. You know? Okay. Granny brought that out. I mean, that's her fault. Thank you, Granny. Miss Eminem. Mm -hmm. right. Other questions, comments right there? I just wanted to add, I have posted a couple of things on Facebook, um, spiritual things, and she has seen them and, you know, actually she said loved them. Um, so I think we're going to be able to do some communicating. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I share one thing with you, Granny, when I first started um, taking evangelism classes, ask questions. And what I mean by that is, don't ever, I encourage you, don't ever tell her. When you're talking about those points of contention, don't ever tell her anything. Ask questions. Just don't ask what we call a, what they call a, a dummy question, okay? A dummy question is, are you stupid? <laughs> you know what I mean? Don't ask those types of questions, but don't you know better than that? Mm -mm. You know, just that loving question, Jesus Christ, when he was on trial. Uh, they slapped him, and Jesus Bay said, why did you hit me? If I've done something wrong, tell me what it is. And this is Jesus. <laughs> this is the Lord. I mean, he could have got gangster, using a good term. He could have got gangster, but he didn't. He asked a question. If I've done evil, bear witness of that evil. But if I haven't done evil, why did you hit me? Ask those types of questions. If 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 I'm wrong, you know, what does my faith mean? The, the fact that I have faith in Christ, is that not why I'm, I'm okay with the Lord? You know, ask those types of questions. And then it's up to her to answer. You know, and when those types of questions, she has to question her faith. Why do I believe the way I believe? Why do I believe these believers who actually have faith in the Lord, who are worshiping him on a regular basis, why do I believe that they're wrong? Those are the questions I had to ask myself when my faith community led me to believe the same thing. And after asking myself those questions and talking them over with the father, he pulled my coattail. Uh, you got the right ta-ta, but the wrong ho-ho. You mean well, but I'm sorry. What you were brought up believing, that's not what it is. It's about my son. You go make it about myself. And I haven't preached a church sermon since. Everything I preach is about his son. That's, that's all I got. His son and him crucified. Because that's what the apostles preached. Hmm. Oh, this is water, ain't she? I'm sure you probably think I have something else in this, but this is this is Sonic. That's your conscience, because I wasn't even thinking about you. I just now saw the score to the Cowboy game. Thank you. Mm. You one of them folk who be watching the game at church, ain't you? You one of them folk, ain't you? Yes, I am. Oh, Lord. Okay, so we're going to put a seal on the prayer list. Uh, just being honest. Hey, I, I respect it. My preacher, do he watch it too. That's why he missed his cue on some of what he read. Okay. Uh, I have zero comments. I'm going to put up the assignment for the week. I need to go visit that Sheila Church. Sound like they got they got it going on. Okay. Let me see. Okay. Let's all go together. It'll be like a field trip. Absolutely. <laughs> they, they closed down my restaurant in Texarkana. When we lost Ruby Tuesdays here in Rockwall, the one in Texarkana was still open. And me and my family, I lied to you not, drove all the way to Texarkana just to go to Ruby Tuesdays because we lost the one here in in, uh, in Rockwall. And then Mac tells me that the one in 
Texarkana closed down. And I'm like, come on. That's no fun. Can y'all see my uh, Word document here, family? Yes, no? Okay. So this is week 11. Uh, this week is very simple, all right? Uh, the book of Acts, yeah, read it. Um, and as you read it, there's this worksheet you have to complete. Let me put this up. I'm going to send you this worksheet unless... I do like I did last week and forget. Thankfully, Aunt Sheila put my coattail and told me I forgot something. So what this is, you're going to consider the conversions in the book of Acts. Now, Acts is a historical record written by the uh, by Luke, same Luke who wrote the gospel, right? And it's called Acts of the Apostles. It He detailed what the apostles in the early church did. Uh, right after the ascension of Jesus. Jesus walked around for about 40 days after the resurrection. The day of Pentecost was 50 days after Easter. So doing the math, within a week or so of Jesus's ascension, the Holy Spirit fell on the church. Luke records this in Acts chapter 2. So from Acts chapter 2 through Acts chapter 28, there was a lot of conversion that took place. So what you're going to do this week uh, is look at those conversions. So as you're going through, the, the scriptures are, 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 are here for you. So you don't really have to find out, hey, where are my conversions? Now, don't go cheating and just looking at Acts 2.14, skipping to Acts 3. No, ain't Sheila. Go ahead and read the whole document. And when you get to Acts chapter 3, okay, when you get to Acts chapter 5, okay, I'm not saying you would do it. I just looked up ain't Sheila and saw you, okay? So what I did, I've left for you an example, uh, uh, the worksheet to display what Jesus' apostles taught concerning the meaning of accepting the gospel of Christ by faith. Read each passage carefully and add notes in the appropriate columns. I want you to read the whole book because of context. Uh, one of the things that keep us as Christians from agreeing with the Bible is we don't really understand the context of scripture, okay? And when we take something out of its context, not even knowing we took it out of its context, sometimes we can come to an understanding that the original author didn't mean and that the original audience would not, would not have understood. Um, we, we talked about this in How to Study the Bible, right? So, so you can have a good context of Acts. That's why I'm going to have you read uh, the whole book. Okay, so that first Pentecostal sermon, if you will, Sermon on Pentecost, there in Acts chapter two, that Peter preaches. Um, you, the worksheet has the setting. This part is given to you. Okay, uh, the setting is the day of Pentecost. The miracle of tongues attracted a large crowd. Peter preached to this Jewish crowd in a temple area. This is what happened. So you'll look for different ex, uh, examples. Is there preaching in the passage? Yes, Peter preached Christ. Okay. Is there belief in the passage? Yes, verse number 37, uh, according to Acts chapter 2, they believe. Uh, 2.37, now when they were, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? We know they believe because they were pricked in their heart. Was there repentance? Yes, verse 38. Peter said, repent and be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Is there baptism in this particular coming to faith example? Uh, verse 41, then they that gladly received the word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. This other is just kind of commentary. If you see something in the passage that you find interesting, you can write it here in the other. So like in verse 42, and they continue steadfast in apostles, doctrine, fellowship, breaking bread and prayers, uh, teaches that the baptized believers did not stop after their baptism. This is my commentary here. Uh, baptism is not the ending of it all. It's the beginning of what they did. Once they were born again, 
they started doing the work of the Lord Jesus. Uh, and we've kind of talked about even in this class, you know, when someone comes to faith, you don't just throw them on the front pew, say, hey, here's your here's your bulletin, here's a new Bible, see you in heaven. <laughs> no, uh, we build them up. We help them grow in their faith so they can then help others come to faith as well. Second Timothy chapter two, verse number two. Okay, so questions about this document here. It's not that many, maybe 15 or so, maybe 20, I don't know, maybe 25. Mm. Yep. Now, if you don't finish this this week, it's really okay, honestly. Um, I would rather you finish it than to half do it, to be quite honest. So please don't feel um, like pressured. Matter of fact, uh, next week we're not even meeting because next week, we have our fellowship meal, which is actually going to come after a baptism Sunday. Three of our saints are being baptized on Sunday. And then we're going to go eat. So, yes, yeah, St. Sheila, you got two weeks to complete this. All right. And I'm sure Nikki, look at that smile on Nikki's face. <laughs> I'm sure Nikki appreciates that. So, yes, in two weeks, that'll be October 8th. We'll come back. Granny wanted you to know that she really appreciates it too. <laughs> so it's not just me and Aunt Sheila, but Granny's on board with us. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> Understood. I'm sure Isabel is not complaining at all as she's over there cheesing. So I absolutely two thumbs up. You know, I hope I don't have a class full of slackers here. I love y'all, but ugh. work with me here. Work with me here. That's to you, Amy. And you try to work with us too, okay? Because you don't work with us half the time either. That's not true. That's not true. We went three weeks without even meeting because of my busy schedule. So you have plenty Because of your busy schedule. Because of your busy schedule. So don't call us slackers. Work I, with us. I remember you not showing up because y'all was having friends family day at the local church, Amy. And that's all well and good. But see, what you don't realize that I realize, and maybe it's because I don't got old or something, but see, you don't think you throw shade and you do, and you don't think you do this, that, and the other, but you do. And then when you're called out on it, then you act like some type of little narcissist and try to put the thing back on us. We told you we don't like to read. We told you, we, well, all except for Steve, that's your boy. Uh, we told you... you Okay, I had to mute Aunt Sheila. I'm not trying to hear all that. But uh, I will unmute her so I can finish what she has to say. I would, uh, uh, unmute, Amy. Unmute. Okay. I don't. I, you can mute me. You don't have to hear me because God will, make, will bring it to you in your dreams tonight. Thank you. You know, Annie, I, I think you embody the biblical text to say it's better to be on a rooftop than in a wide house with a brawling woman. I, I think you identify well with the passage of scripture, but you're very loving. So it's kind of hard to not appreciate the woman that you are. You can identify me with anything you want to, okay? Because you know what? Your, my spirit and your spirit, your little demons don't match mine sometime and, and mine don't match yours, okay? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. You read all of them 124,000 books and pages oh, because you want to. Lord. We done told you. We read them because you make us read them. Amy, we have not because we ask not. The only th way we get better at what we're doing is if we stop. Yep. Fix it. Fix it. Just like pastors do. Fix it. <laughs> Study to show thyself approved unto God. Study to show thyself approved. Of course, there was one pastor talking to another one, but we do believe that it was uh, applicable to all saints. Okay. Uh, questions here about... Uh Stevie, Stevie, I love you, baby, but try not to hang out with him too much. You know, don't don't, don't let that thing, birds of a feather, get too close to you, baby.
I bet Pastor Didi wishes that his uh, online college class was as fun as this one is. You know, I think it would be if they knew me the way y'all do, but I don't think <laughs> Casey, you would appreciate them talking to me like this. <laughs> yeah, we might even join in on it. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. I, you know, I was raised in a house that, um, you know, my mom was all about having a good time as a Christian. So uh, I was raised in a space where, you know what, we have a pretty serious thing that we're doing, but we can have a good time doing it, you know? So I'm all about, you know, this space, just being real with each other, having a good time with each other, helping each other, encouraging each other. You know, uh, I definitely was taught to respect my elders, so I would never uh, say anything detrimental, um, hateful or evil to anybody, even someone younger than me. So it's all jokes and having a good time with Aunt Sheila for certain. Uh, she's a sweetie. Notice my fingers are crossed, but she's a sweetie. Okay. Any questions about our document here? No. Okay. I will make sure that I send this to you immediately. And again, I'm going to leave this example here. Um, so yes, just as you're going through Acts 1 through 28 over the next two weeks, when you come to a, a conversion, just look, hey, is there what preaching is done here? Give me the verse, like the example. Uh, give me the verse. Sometimes you're going to come to an example that doesn't have one of those. There might be, there might not be a specific reference to baptism. There might be, not be a specific reference to, to repentance. You know, uh, some of them are like that in the book of Acts. Some of them cover all of them, like Acts chapter two. You see preaching, believe, repentance, and baptism. Okay. So if you don't see it in a particular text, you know, that's okay. If it's not there, it's not there. All we have is the biblical record. Uh, this is kind of designed to get us to see. Uh, what Luke left for Theophilus as relates to the early conversions of Christian people. That's that's all this uh, exercise is designed to do. Okay. All right. So Acts 1 through 28, next couple of weeks. And then this uh, worksheet is all we have. Uh, Lord's weather, we will meet um, October 8th. Um, any prayer requests before we part? You know, we're going to pray over Nancy and Granny. Um, Anything else on the uh, heart of the, the believers? Okay. Well, Stevie, do me a favor as you pray us out of here. Uh, remember uh, the work, uh, the challenge that is before Granny as it relates to her showing love to her friend Nancy. Uh, may God season her mind, her tongue, as she represents her faith. Please. Sure. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we come before your throne again, just so thankful, Father God, for this time of fellowship, Father God. And we pray that, again, as we get into your word, that you continue to use us to grow us, Father God, as we just uh, broaden our spiritual arsenal, Father God, with the knowledge that you've blessed us with, Father God, help us to uh, apply it to our, our, our actual situations, Father God, that we can begin to just change the small parts of uh, areas of life that we can, Father God, with the gospel and expand your kingdom, Father God. We pray that you just continue to bless us to step out of our comfort zones more, Father God, and to uh, know that you're with us, that your Holy Spirit's with us, guiding us, leading us into all situations, Father God. Help us to acknowledge you, Father, and uh, to do the work that you've been preparing us for, Father, as we step out more in faith. Father, we also want to lift up Grandma Kathy, Father, and Pray that you bless her efforts, Father, as she continues to spread the love and knowledge of your word to her friend Nancy, Father God. It's been some 40 years, Father God, and uh, they're coming back into fellowship, Father. So we pray that you just fill her with your Holy Spirit, Father God. May she be led and guided by your Spirit, Father, as you give her the words to speak, Father, drawing uh, her faith out more uh, into to question what she believes in. Is it lining up with the word, Father God? And we just pray that you use Grandma Kathy in a mighty way, Father God, as your servant, and to expand your kingdom, Father God, and to share the love of Christ. We pray and ask you all these things, Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen.
Hey, Granny, have you noticed or have you thought that uh, the number 40 in the Hebrew Bible, especially, but even in the New Testament, it represents a time of trial, which is followed by a time of renewal. Uh, we see this in uh, the 40 day flood. We see this in the 40 year journey through the wilderness. Uh, we see this in a 40 day uh, time of wilderness, Israel's wilderness. We see it in a 40 day wilderness with Jesus. So I find it interesting here that God here in a series and in the year of 40, it's like, okay, you know, did you, did you think about that? No, I didn't say, thank you very much for pointing that out. That is interesting. Mm -hmm. yeah. So bless and zone you. Uh, we're being in prayer with you and for you as you be about our father's business. Love you for your, your spirit. Love you, Amy. Love you, Nikki. Love you, Stevie. Love you, Isabel. Now I'm going to go read since that's what I like to do, ain't Sheila? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you and good my, night. Not my problem. Love y'all. Oh, my goodness. Love you guys. <laughs> good night. <laughs> yep. Love you. Good night. <laughs> and don't forget to send the stuff. Now, if I have to text you, I'm going to put some little ugly smileys with it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.